Okay, so I'm happy to be here today to talk about um, the work that we, we did on making artists accessible to pilots who are deaf or hard of hearing. And there's plenty of co-authors on this paper, and we're going to tell you a little bit later why there are so many people on this paper. Um, so my name is Anke Brock. Um, I'm an assistant professor at INAC, opposite of the street, um, the French Civil Aviation University. And, uh, I'm Christophe Lonis, uh, head of uh, Human Cockpit Interaction at S2Z Group. So let's start. So uh, deaf and hard of hearing uh, pilots can easily fly in in-control space where radio is not required. However, in control of space, they cannot fly without any assistance. Uh, so one major services for uh, pilot in general aviation is ATIS. Uh, ATIS provide a vocal message that contain essential information, such as uh, weather, weather data or active runaway, for example. So this is an example. Uh, what ATIS message is? 666 Conway Drive, level 70. So, commercial aviation have developed DATS that you can see on the image on your right, just there. So, DATS for data link ATS consists of a written message given by air traffic controller to pilots. However, this service is, does not exist for small airports used by pilots in general aviation. So as a result, deaf and hard of hiring pilots have developed alternative communications between uh, pilots and air traffic controller. So one backdoor method that have been used is light gun signals, a old tool used by air traffic controller to communicate with aircraft during, malf during communication malfunction. Sorry. So, however, in France, only two sur noble and a small airport near Paris uh, still have light gun signals. So, as you can see on the image on your right, uh, there, uh, this light emits a color beam that can be flashed or steady depending on the position of the aircraft on the ground or in the air, for example. So, another method developed by deaf and hard of hearing pilots, it's a uh, uh, radio co-pilots on board who communicate with air traffic controller and transmit information to the flying pilot by waiting on a, on a whiteboard, sorry. So depending on the situations, it can also point to specific elements to, to transmit a specific uh, information, for example, or the information it collects, or just showing or pointing the runaway uh, in services, for example. So uh, the radio co-pilots listen at this on the frequency. So Fans for All, for Future Navigation System for All, is an, is an association that aims at making possible for deaf and hard of hearing pilots to fly in controller space. It involves S2Z, ENAC, Université de Rennes, Université de Tarbes. There are several challenges that concern, for example, speech to text to transcript that is uh, information, or the creation of a multimodal device to enable deaf and hard of hearing pilots to fly independently. So one big challenge concerns the accessibility of ATIS, and that's what this work focuses on. Okay. More specifically in this work, we focused on the user interface of the ATIS, so what the pilot would see. And this work was done by students of the Master of Human Computer Interaction in Toulouse. So uh, Laura, Liam, Ilyas, and Caroline, who cannot be here today because they're already working on their master's thesis. Um, so we are presenting on their behalf, but they actually did uh, most of the work. Uh, and this was done between September and March um, this year. So just to quickly talk about the related work. Um, so we have looked into what uh, work has been done in the area of assistive technology for people who are deaf and hard of hearing. And of course, many things are done around sign language, um, for instance, using uh, language data sets or avatars. Um, but uh, sign language is also challenging because it is hard to learn and there's even deaf people who do not uh, speak sign language. Um, and uh, other recent applications are looking into automatically recognizing environmental sound and presenting it to the deaf and hard of hearing users, for instance, through um, visual or tactile modalities. So for instance, the, this shows an application at home where it would show the user information that the water is, tab is running um, so he could find it. 
Okay, in aeronautics, if you look at how to make things more uh, inclusive or more accessible, there has been work for blind on, on making uh, piloting accessible to blind pilots. Um, There's a system used uh, sound flyer called sound flyer, which uh, sonifies two dimensions of the aircraft attitude, uh, the pitch and the bank angles, for instance. And there's also work on uh, multimodal cockpit assistance or uh, mobile assistance, for instance, on tablets uh, for pilots, which could be promising venues. Um, so during the work for our students, uh, what we teach them is to apply a user-centered or participatory design approach. So I guess most of you are not familiar with it, so I'm going to just quickly introduce this. Um, so this is a design approach where you involve the target users into the design um, and you use an iterative design process with several steps, the steps being the analysis, the design, the prototyping and the evaluation. And in our case, we wanted to work with deaf uh, pilots, but there are not so many of them in France, so we extended our target users also to hearing pilots. So in the first step, the analysis phase, um, the goal is to better understand the context. So what are the users actually doing and also the needs they would have. Um, so what we did in the first step was a workshop with um, deaf and hard of hearing pilots and designers. And this led to defining the objectives of the work um, regarding the completeness of the information transmitted, the acquisition time, the error rate. Um, it should be usable during all flight phases. It should notify the user about updates of the artist version, and it should be um, possible to quickly select new airports um, like it is possible in the current artist. Other steps were to observe, do an observation flight with hearing pilots, which allowed our students to better understand what act artist actually is and how it works. Um, and also to do interviews with 14 pilots, one of them was deaf, um, and create scenarios on the use of artists and what could uh, be problematic about using artists. The next step then is the design phase. So the goal is to create ideas um, based on the observations from the previous analysis phase. Um, and our students did two brainstorming sessions. One was conducted on site with 10 students from INAC who study either to become pilots or um, aeronautical, aeronautical engineers. And one was done online uh, because of COVID and because our deaf people are not in Toulouse, but in Paris. Um, uh, and this brainstorming was done with one deaf pilot and six piloting students. And the questions that were asked for the brainstorming were around how should the artist information be visualized and how should the artist be selected. And this led to the creation of a few prototypes, um, low, fidelity, low fidelity prototypes. So this is an idea based um, on the strips that are used by uh, air traffic control. Uh, this is a sketch of an um, uh, airport map, actually. And this is the first idea of using a tablet device um, to show the artist information. Okay, so the next step is then the prototyping phase. Um, so the goal here is to converge from the paper-based and low fidelity prototypes to a functional prototype. Um, initially, the students were designing for four different device types. Uh, one was an embedded cockpit system, which is to the left. So the idea would be to integrate it in the cockpit of the plane. One was on a smartwatch um, because many people are uh, using smartwatches already. Uh, one on a mobile phone and one on a tablet. So what uh, was done was then to show the videos of the prototypes to 10 users online and asynchronously. And the result was then um, that the users would, that the students would focus on the tablet, which you can see here, include the radar view, which is already proposed in this version. And there was also some feedback on the symbols that were used that needed to be improved. Okay, so this is, shows the development of the different prototypes, so focusing on the tablet device. Um, so this is the paper-based sketch then there is uh, um, two prototypes that have been done using Adobe XD, and then there is a functional prototype implemented. And we showed all these prototypes iteratively in, uh, in simulators, uh, and at every step of the design, there were some improvements made until this was finally implemented and running on an Android device. So, so this is an example of uh, the final prototype. So the pilot enters the OACI uh, code of the airport and then he's, he selects an airport on his departure according to his flight plan so in finally he defines the home airport and set a landing airport and then you can consult uh, this information related to uh, airport near his position So a first pilot study involving uh, three pilots and one deaf and hard of hearing pilots was conducted by our students. So they used digital artists 
in simulator in order measuring the effectiveness of uh, the design and the interface. So by measuring usability uh, using uh, SUS questionnaires. So SUS questionnaires show that an acceptable score uh, was performed except for one participant, participant one, for whom the, the simulation did not work well. So moreover, comparing to, to Atis Audio, tablet uh, digital Atis, a low gain of 13 seconds comparing to audio Atis. And the qualitative interview allowed uh, the addition of new features such as a new interaction or direct manipulation, such as pinch for zooming on the radar screen, for example. So there are some limitations about this study. So first one, more participants is need to perform statistical analysis in measuring the real effectiveness of the digital artists. Or second, uh, there are some ergonomic criteria defined by Bastien and Scapin were not uh, respected during uh, the design phase. And, uh, and an assessment of that need to be performed. And one major concern of um, funds for all, so the, asso the association, is the development of a multimodal system allowing deaf and hard of hearing pilots to fly independently. So we developed a solution with uh, haptic jackets and, uh, ta and digital tablets that allow uh, deaf and hard to hearing pilots communicate with air traffic controllers, as you can see on the right image. And the one functionality is uh, it is developed uh, in this uh, in this world. So we develop also a speech to text system uh, allowing to uh, allowing to uh, to make a transcription of the audio artist. And uh, the speech to text motor will be implemented integrated in the multimodal system. So to conclude, this attitude could be useful for hearing pilots. Also, deafness is an occupational disease that affects all pilots. And allowing pilot to access some information on the other channels that audio auditory channel would uh, reduce the time to noise exposure. So I would like to to thank the student and thank you for supervision. Uh, thank you.